We're following some breaking news coming out of the area of Tijuana, Mexico. This borders Southern California. This as the news has come out about whether or not an asylum deal has been made with Mexico. These pictures you see here from moments ago, Hans Nichols there with this group. And Hans, we were just getting off the air. And then this happened, which you saw and you witnessed, and you, you saw them begin to move. Where were they moving to and why was such energy? Oh, well, David, the situation has changed dramatically in the last 20 minutes or so. What's happened is that the migrants that were prevented from crossing the bridge, they wanted to come in, uh, go over the bridge and get to the U.S. border, which is right there. Instead, they ended up coming and they're here and they're here in this bridge uh, here that's trying to cross this river. As you can see, it's quite a dirty river. The smell of sewage is quite strong. So what you have here is migrants trying to make and literally storm the border here. Now, right there is the San Ysidro point of entry. That's the normal back and forth where it goes. There's a bridge above that where they normally would cross, but because that was blocked by Mexican police, they are trying to cross this way. I have to say there's still a lot of obstacles between these migrants and the United States. Yes, we're looking at a wall there that seems to be about 20, 30 feet high. That's the normal border crossing. The people that you see walking there uh, that are walking along the catwalk, they are just normal people going back and forth on the border. On the other side of this embankment, on the other side of this berm, there are federal police. We saw riot police and we also saw some U.S. So uh, service members, U.S. soldiers earlier. This is an official point of entry. What the migrants that we've been talking to all morning have been saying is that they're fed up with their conditions inside of the camp and that they want to make their asylum claim in person. They essentially want to surrender. 20 minutes ago, it was a stalemate. Situation has changed dramatically. There's still hundreds of migrants coming down. Here we just see them spilling over and they're trying to get up and above. Now, it's very difficult to do crowd estimates, but I would say easily more than a thousand have crossed. That's the situation it is right now, David. We'll get back to you when we get a little bit more. Just to be clear, we are still on the Mexico side right here. On the other side right there, that is the U.S. border. It's maybe a football field away. You can also see right here a drone. I don't know if we can pick that up. That gives you a sense of just how militarized the border is. When I look above me, I see maybe half a dozen drones that are kind of monitoring this situation. What's unclear is if they stand any chance, these migrants, of penetrating the border, crossing that wall on the other side, because this is a hardened, fortified border. This is the part where there actually is a wall, and it, I would be very surprised if they're able to get through that. What this move will do, David, is it will bring attention to what's happening here, and that is you have more than 5,000 migrants in a camp. They could no longer tolerate their, their conditions, and they're trying to get across the border and make those asylum claims in person. David? Uh, so, Hans, uh, as the reporting has been, and please correct me if I'm off here, that they are processing only, what, about 100 asylum applications a day. This and the tension, you were showing me earlier yeah. some of the Mexican police. There's also the, the forces that are on the other side on the U.S. border. H how are they going to mitigate this, uh, if, if you will, escalating into potential altercations, because that's a concern. Yeah, well, there were some confrontations earlier between riot peace police uh, and these migrants. So they weren't terribly violent, but there were definitely clashes back and forth. The, uh, the federal police trying to hold their ground in full riot gear. What ended up happening was that the migrants found a different way around them. They slipped around them. And as you can see, this is a massive waterway here. It floods if there's a lot of rain and the dam gets released up above. But you can continue to see uh, them, them heading up there. So to answer your question, how this resolves itself, it's unclear. One possibility is that the 5,000 migrants that were inside the camp make it to basically the base of the San Ysidro point of entry. That happened a few months ago, and that put pressure on the U.S. government to process those asylum claims faster. You ask how many are processed a day. The number we hear is between 60 and 100, but it's hard to get a precise figure. What the Trump administration wants to do is process all of those asylum claims inside of Mexico. If that's what they, if that ends up being what the ultimate deal is on December 1, that means these guys have only five days to make their claims in person on U.S. soil. Richard? Hans, you've been there. Uh, give us a sense of the migrants themselves. Are, are, are we seeing uh, many uh, uh, mothers and children, uh, men versus women, old yeah. versus young? And, and, and what's the state of, of them right now? Are they, are they clean? Are they able to get uh, the well, services they need? 
Well, they're bedraggled. Uh, they do have water. They do have some showers that they can share. You know, he, this is about a 30 degree embankment where they came down. And when I was coming down, there were several mothers with strollers. We just saw a father come down here. We could swing out. This gives you a sense. That child there looks to be about two, about two years old, being held uh, by a gentleman, potentially his father. It's very hard. And then up here, we have some more strollers coming down. It's really hard to do a full census yeah. of just what the makeup of these migrants are. Hans, you do how, see how a lot of children. You also see a lot of men. Yeah. And, and, and Hans, what's the sanitation level? Because that's that, that would be a question, right? As they are moving so many hundreds of miles now, they've been out uh, uh, move, moving north for so many weeks. Uh, well, there are showers. There are porta potties. Uh, we hear, heard some reports of porta potties overflowing. Uh, it's you know they're sleeping on the ground. They're sleeping and there are 5,000 people on the side of a junior high baseball field in the United States. That's not a lot of people to share that amount of space. They're cramped in there. Uh, when you see a lot of the aid workers go in there and even some journalists, they're wearing masks because they don't want to get sick. Uh, but in general, they do have they they have they, there is the opportunity to get meals. Sometimes they're charged. Sometimes they're given away. And there is running water. But I have to say, now it looks like most of these guys, the, the flow has slowed down here. But what these guys are following, the flow, they're basically going over an open sewer here. The stench from this river is pretty overpowering. And they're walking over. We've seen some people slip in the sludge here on their way in. They're going over this and trying to get, uh, trying to get up there. So to answer your question, uh, yes, they do, have, they, they do have access to showers. But 5,000 people living in that close quarters, uh, there are bound to be some sanitation issues. Richard? Yeah, so well described. Uh, great to have you there. NBC's Hans Nichols there in Tijuana, Mexico, following this breaking story now as we see the movement right behind him of some of the migrants going towards the U.S.-Mexico border. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.